so we're out on the deck garden and here is the tray of tea seeds that I prepared last October, I believe. Yeah, they were sown on 10-8, 2014, even though this is pretty well faded. But I've already checked this out, so it's not going to surprise me. But what do we have? Nothing. Weeds. Nothing. Out of more than 300 tea seeds that I germinated in here, I got 0% germination. And why is that? Well, I believe it was because of the wintertime cold. So um, last winter in Athens, Georgia, I got down to 11 degrees. And this tray was sitting under this rack here all winter. And I believe um, without the insulation of the earth underneath it, that this entire section froze and killed the seeds because these are just the shell casings I laid on top, but if we dig down a little bit, they're an inch deep, as they should have been. The medium was kept moist, as it should have been. But, see we have a seed there, and empty. So I believe it died, probably back in February or January, and rotted ever since then. Empty. empty empty so I'm not gonna dig through this whole thing because if any one of them were not rotted and still viable they would have germinated a long time ago it's very disappointing and it's a tragic loss to lose over 300 seeds and it's ridiculous because they're just straight up empty they're not even there's not like a rotting mass inside they're just empty um, very dis. I mean, there's a little seed mass, a little white. That's about it. So, I'm pretty sure that we got zero percent success in this one. Uh, you know, there's a chance that all of these were empty to begin with, but I don't think so because when I soaked these in water, I got a good percentage of sinkers and just a loss. But it's not a total loss because. To demonstrate the point of temperature and how important it is for tea seeds, let's take a look at my makeshift greenhouse here. It's not exactly makeshift, but it's not exactly professional either. Oops. So take a look at this. Under the protection of the greenhouse, we had some success. Look at how good these look. I'm getting close. These are healthy and vibrant. And if you'll notice, we had a lot more germination to the rear end of the, the tray than in the front. I don't know if this end heated up more or dried out more or what the deal is, uh, but these look great. And there's two differences between this group of seeds and the one I just showed you. The first difference was it was under this plastic all winter. So maybe it was protected enough from the really, really cold temperatures to make sure they didn't freeze and survived. Also, as you can see, you can see a lot of seeds on top they're not buried. I didn't bury these seeds like the tea germination guide recommended. I soaked them and I went through all the beginning steps, but then I just laid them across the top of the medium. I did this because when I'd see tea plants um, in the wild or in the pseudo wild in people's yards or planted in public places, there was a lot of these seedlings coming up around them. And I know that for the majority, most of them were not buried. They could have been buried by wildlife, but Probably not. How's it going? <laughs> so that's the two, two major differences between these two trays. The germination guide indicates that after three or four leaves have developed that the seedlings can be moved from an 80% shade to a 30 to 40% shade. Right now on top of the greenhouse I have a 75% shade cloth that's been doubled over although this section as you can see has been left open. So I have no idea what the type of shade this structure is providing but at this point we see four leaves there two leaves there maybe two and a half there so if I were if these seedlings were all planted in separate pots I would maybe keep them under the 80% shade condition for maybe another couple weeks until some more leaves developed and then transition them out into the sun especially with the very high temperatures 
an intense sun in Georgia. But since these seedlings are all planted in a tray, they need to be transplanted at some point before they get too large because the larger they get, the more extensive the root systems are and the more damage to the root systems that will occur. So my next step before I move them into more sun is to transplant each one of these into its own pot. Now, whether you're going to move them into the sun if they're in separate pots or whether you need to transplant them, the next step after that would be to apply some fertilizer according to the germination guide. And there are two types of fertilizer that the guide recommends. Countdown timer on the camera. Four, five, six, All right. The first type of fertilizer that the University of Hawaii suggests to add to your tea plants is a granule fertilizer. And what I have right here is Osmocote. That's just a brand name, but this is a granular uh, pelletized fertilizer. And then when you add it to the plants, as they become wet, they'll slowly release uh, the nutrients that are contained within. Particularly, Osmocote is a 15-8-12 ratio. So 15 nitrogen, 8 phosphorus, 12% potas potassium. And if I were transplanting these today, I would add a couple grains of Osmocote, maybe something like that, to each small little pot. The next type of fertilizer that's recommended is a water-soluble formulation specifically for, see, water-soluble specifically for acid-loving plants. Most of the time these fertilizers will indicate if it's acid-loving because it'll say azalea, camellia, rhododendron, sometimes gardenia. That's how you know it's for acid-loving plants. And what the University of Hawaii recommends is to feed the seedlings either uh, at around this stage with about half of the concentration that it recommends. So I see we're going to use water, watering cans, so it says uh, outdoor plants. Mix one and a half tablespoons per one and a half gallons. So if I were to do one and a half gallons, I'm going to do about zero point seven five tablespoons that would be about half the strength and that can be a foliar feed so I'd mix this with water and water the plants making sure to wet all the leaves and I'll show you exactly how I do that in the next video. Personally what I recommend and what other people that grow tea camellias recommend also is this holly tone. Why I like it? It's organic so if I'm trying to raise organic tea plants, organic tea farm, this is the one of the most common sense fertilizers to use. Uh, like Osmocote, it's also a, a physical kind of granular mix, as you can see here. Um, but it's not of the same formulation in the sense it's not covered with some type of plastic that slowly releases as the water washes over it. Uh, Specifically, um, this holly tone is a 4-3-4 mix with some various other nutrients in it. And the main uh, components of holly tone are feather meal, poultry manure, bone meal, alfalfa meal, green sand humates, sulfate of potash, sulfate of potash magnesia, and elemental sulfur. And another thing that why I really like this is it contains these non-plant food ingredients. Uh, they call them CFUs, colony, form, colony forming units. And basically um, what that is is uh, microorganisms that are beneficial to the plants. And they're dormant in this bag, but when they become wet, then they are apparently revived and help your plants to grow. Um, Expiration date. The microbes in this product are best used prior to the date printed on the top back surface of the bag. After that time, the numbers may be reduced. So, uh, be care of, take care and look for expiration dates. I'm not exactly seeing. Oh, there's my date. Eleven four of nineteen. 
so I have plenty of time. Anyway, Holly Tone, that's what I recommend. Um, like I said, I'm not going to add any of these fertilizers at this moment because I still want to transplant all these into individual containers. And instead of moving them into that 30 to 40 percent shade condition, I'm going to keep them relatively shaded because I know that any plant after it's transplanted undergoes a certain amount of stress and adding sun on top of stress is probably bad. It's not probably bad, I know it's bad. It's adding an additional stressor, so I'm going to transplant, keep them in a shady condition after I fertilize them for maybe another month or so and then gradually move them out. Tea plants have no problem being in a shadier condition. Um, their growth rate might be, be slowed down, but it definitely decreases the chance for plant injury and plant death. So, um, the last thing that the uh, the germination guide from Hawaii recommends is that after these tea seedlings become about a foot tall, right now they're maybe two and a half inches, three inches, so after they're about a foot tall, uh, then you can transplant them out into the field. But that's of course again after hardening them off from a high shade, 80% condition, transition to a 30-40% condition, and then from that slowly trans transitioned out over weeks and months to a full sun location. Of course the transition duration um, is going to differ depending on where you live and also how hot it is because full sun in 100 degrees is very different than full sun in 70 degrees. So I don't think I have an example of a foot tall tea plant um, but if I did I'd show it to you. Last thing I want to cover um, and talk about because it has to do with this temperature and why I lost so many seedlings is this three like three stacks of empty pots and if you count them up that's about 71 pots I think and all of those used to hold live tea plants that perished over the winter I believe for the same reason because they're all up here unprotected under plastic and uninsulated from the earth underneath so I learned my lesson and no longer will I keep tea plants up on this wooden porch elevated above the ground where they can't have some type of protection from that winter cooling. This was a very, this is one of my first tea plants I ever got. I ordered it from Tsubaki Camellias in Savannah, Georgia. I had it for a couple years and it was pretty well developed compared to the other ones and it didn't make it. So very disappointing again, uh, but I definitely learned my lesson. So. Uh, and learn from my mistake too. If you live in a similar climate that's very cold, by, and by very that's relative, but if you're getting into the teens, single digits, even uh, lower 20s, please make sure that you keep your tea plants on the ground if they're in pots, and preferably in a hoop house or a cold frame or under some form of plastic until the plant is old enough and large enough to, to be able to withstand the cold temperatures. Um, and be planted into the ground. So that's about all for today.